Bonjour, Nindo et Maganaduk. Jacques Nishnikas, Megazi and Dodem. The single Jibway and Nishnabi and Dao. It's been a long time since I've done a video blog, so with a lot of the uh, discussion going on online and on Facebook about the uh, boundary claim settlement and about the new trust agreement, I thought I'd uh, talk a bit about that today. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, a trust is really just that it's about trust. It's about the trust we put in uh, our elected leadership, those that we elect on chief and council every th three years. It's about the trust we put in our uh, our staff and our advisors that uh, negotiate and write up these agreements. And, you know, we have to really enable them by and empower them uh, to act on our behalf in a good way. But it's also important that, uh, you know, the proper parameters and the proper uh, language is in these agreements to ensure that, uh, you know, that the trust and the settlement uh, is, uh, is maintained for a long time and of uh, long-lasting benefit to our community. I'm really strongly in favor of having elected representatives on the trust. And we do that. We do have that. We have our chief our deputy chief and the highest ranking counselor that will be on the trust and any every time we elect them uh, every three years we have an opportunity to make sure that uh, that uh, new representation is on the trust and I really believe in having elected representatives on the trust that uh, that we can elect every three years you know it demonstrates the trust we put in our leadership but it also ensures that uh, it is the elected council of uh, Nipissing First Nation those that we elect as beneficiaries that that um, you know are uh, maintaining and looking after our, um, our long-term financial investments. Um, it's also about uh, ensuring that the right people are on the trust as well. You know, and I'm not in favor of just electing trustees at large. We need to make sure that trustees that are managing 129 million dollars. Um, you know, have the right uh, qualifications and education and uh, experience in investing and, and managing finances at this level. And that is absolutely essential. I've seen time and time again in uh, First Nations I've worked with uh, across Canada, um, you know, trust's gone bad and uh, money not invested well and poor decisions being made because, you know, the community didn't have trust in the people that have, you know, the skills and the experience required to do this, uh, this kind of work. So uh, I'm really, uh, I'm happy that the, the chief and the deputy chief and the highest ranking counselor will be uh, a part of the trust. We get to hold them to account every three years when we elect them. We do need to have a revamped trust and uh, change is very important for, uh, you know, not only, um, you know, these kinds of agreements, but making sure that, you know, they're up to date. We need to make sure that, uh, you know, the trust is able to manage a, a settlement of this size. We need to be able to, you know, for those that want the, uh, the per capita distribution to have a trust that's able to do that. We also want to make sure that the, the new trust agreement uh, uh, has the, our most current policies, uh, such as our, you know, uh, our financial administration law that's uh, being developed. Our conflict of interest policy um, is incorporated as well as our land code for those that want to uh, use the uh, the trust and the monies there for uh, buying additions to reserve we need to make sure those rules are in place and they're referenced uh, back to our uh, our land code you know uh, most of all you know it creates comprehensive provisions for accountability and good financial management uh, and ensures that we have professional advice uh, on the trust and to me that's essential you know, I have worked with a number of First Nation communities and Aboriginal organizations across Canada and uh, seen uh, land claim trusts and, uh, and band administrations, tribal councils. You know, of all of those communities and, and organizations, I'm very proud to say I'm from Nipissing First Nation and our Nipissing Nation uh, is very well managed in terms of accountability and, uh, and uh, how we, you know, hold our decisions to business principles and, uh, and financial accountability. You know, uh, I, I, I've seen it time and time again how uh, you know a lot of communities second guess their advisors and uh, a lot of communities second guess their uh, chief and councils that they have in place and ultimately it's the trust that suffers and uh, we need to make sure that you know not only are we putting the provisions in there that are comprehensive enough and uh, you know spell out a lot of the uh, rules and requirements to manage that trust we also have to make sure we hold our uh, our uh, trustees into account and I think this comprehensive uh, um, trust agreement does that. 
you know, I wasn't too pleased with the $20,000 um, uh, amount of the per capita distribution. I'm not uh, in favor of, uh, you know, this generation spending the money that could really help our community in the long run. Our teachings tell us that we need to look after our children and grandchildren to the seventh generation. And if this generation uh, decides they want to spend uh, half or all of this, uh, this settlement, uh, you know, in cash distribution to our membership, you know, it really doesn't benefit, uh, you know, those of the, the future generations of Nipissing. I want to say, uh, you know, one more thing. I attended the uh, session in uh, Toronto, the uh, land claim uh, um, information session. And this, uh, this uh, band council was there to able to answer questions. The administration was there. Um, our land staff were there. And you may not have heard the questions and answers that were provided uh, um, uh, through the webcast, but a lot of those question and answers were answered, you know, through discussion during breaks and before the meeting and then after the meeting. I know I had most of my questions answered just in that one session. And, you know, the presentations were professionally done. Uh, the agenda was uh, really great. And I was really pleased that, you know, 50, close to 50 of our community members uh, living in Toronto came and attended this session, not to mention the over 150 that were online now watching the webcast. So I really want to commend our chief and council for, uh, you know, being there and uh, taking the steps to, uh, to answer our questions and, uh, you know, put together the opportunity to, uh, um, you know, have that that took place at this information session. You know, uh, I'm also very happy with, um, you know, this agreement and it provides a number of uh, very uh, important uh, financial requirements when it comes to expending the resources. I'm really happy that it's going to require at least three quarters of council to make any decisions when it comes to uh, expending and making use of, uh, of those resources. I think it's important to have chief and council oversight on uh, on um, expenditures because ultimately we elect them to be, we elect the chiefs to be responsible uh, and do things on our behalf. Um, I also like that, uh, you know, we're not going to, you know, immediately liquidate our entire settlement. Um, you know, it doesn't allow for another per capita distribution for another 10 years. So I'm really pleased with that. And also, uh, you know, no per capita distribution will happen again uh, until the trust builds back up to $100 million. You know, I want to say, uh, you know, two final things. Again, reiterating the point that, you know, we elect our chief and council. And if you're not happy with chief and council and you uh, think you could do a better job, um, want to do a better job, by all means, I want to encourage you to, to vote. I want to encourage you to run for council, sit on a committee, volunteer to be a part of this, uh, this new trust, and uh, you know, let your actions speak, uh, speak more than your words. Um, you know, in the meantime, we elect our chief and council to make these decisions. And, uh, you know, I'm going to put my faith in uh, those decisions at this point. But, uh, you know, as I said, you know, if I'm not happy with the way things are happening, six months, eight months, a year down the line, I have the opportunity to choose a new chief and council. And, uh, you know, that's what uh, democracy is all about. Uh, so thanks for listening. I uh, really encourage you to get out and vote, whether you have an opinion, uh, uh, yay or nay, on the uh, settlement or, uh, or the trust agreements. You know, you need to go out and exercise your vote and uh, to source your opinions. Just make sure you get the right information because there's a lot of uh, bad information that's out there, information that's uh, based on myth and speculation and a lot of uh, information that's based on anger as well and uh, mistrust. And, uh, you know, to me, those uh, that's not the right place to, uh, to disseminate information. The best information is factual. So make sure you get the right information out there. And uh, thanks for listening. Take care.